We are coming to the end. I can't and ending on family. such a crazy note. Yes, we all saw it. I ran away from my house. Yeah. I didn't know what was going to happen next. Yeah. Save me. It just gets worse and worse. Hi there. Are you okay? Oh, thank God. Thank God. There's someone kind. I'm sure kind. A hero Damn you. Will be here soon. Damn you. That's almost worse than everyone ignoring it. <laughs> Uh, there's obviously some darker elements of this, but to people's credit, I just think a lot of people who would like to help don't help because there's a danger of harm there too. It's tough when you don't know the situation. I mean, there is definitely potential for selfishness in it. There's a possible laziness in it, especially in this situation. It seems more clear cut because it's a child, but these people literally know nothing and they don't know what they're going to be inviting into their lives by reaching out to a stranger. As I've mentioned, I'm from New York City and I've heard about New Yorkers that they're really cold and unkind and there's a lot of coldness and unkindness there, but I also know that part of the New York culture is that people will trip over the themselves to help you once they've identified that you're someone who needs help and you're not after something the reason that people there have a cold face is because they're so used to being bombarded with people who want something from them or are trying to take advantage of them so you have a protective layer while you're out but as soon as you realize oh this person's lost or this person isn't trying to hustle me then you see all this warmth come out like i've literally seen people arguing over who is correct in their attempt to help me with directions so i want to give these people a little bit of the benefit of the doubt and another problem that is a problem but isn't a malicious problem is that there's like this assumption that everyone else is more qualified or that someone else will do it, which is a problem, but I don't think it's at the same scale as like just complete indifference to the lives of others. Nevertheless, it's a truly heartbreaking scene for Shigaraki, who is just looking for anyone, anything, and has just experienced arguably one of the most horrific things imaginable. The and she literally runs too. She runs away, flees. The more crime and emergencies there are, if I mean, terrible missed opportunity. Anyone, anyone at yeah, all. right. And someone did reach out at the perfect or worst I moment. Yeah, itching to kill everyone, literally. Whoa, whoa, it's all right. Everything will be all right. Nothing is all right. Everything is terrible. <laughs> Nothing will ever be okay again until Deku shows up. <laughs> it's so genius. Like, I think I said a similar thing in, in Fruits Basket. One of the best ways that you can build this kind of tension is you have like the ultimate this, you know, and the ultimate that, and then the two intersect. And it's just a hurricane of values and emotions and actions. This arc did such a great job establishing the depths for Shigaraki. But the previous four and a half seasons <laughs> have established the heights of Deku's and other characters' raw power of goodness, you know? So I have hope. That's the thing for a bunch of shows on this channel, too. Like, Attack on Titan is similar. It goes all the way to the depths. And then Erwin Smith. Child, you have such an urge to destroy that it's impossible for you to control it or keep it below the surface. I also just realized it's a huge gesture for him to have reached out his hand to Shigaraki. Assuming he knew that. Knew what happened. This is our street, brat! Oh, these are the people he meets. It wasn't just that All for One found him. It was worse than being ignored. Well, now he's got a taste for it. And it tastes good. Morals. Ethics. These are concepts created by humanity. People who wanted the world to run smoothly. Don't be held back by them. Ooh. What's inside of you is more important than anything else. Ooh. I sort of love it. What do you want to do? I sort of love what All for One said about morality because I think he's right to some extent. I think there is something weak with morality. There is something weak with values and societal rules, at least the way they're implemented. I mean, I think this is a larger theme on the channel where very broadly speaking, there's like the source of the thing and then there's the way that source is explained and implemented. And I think always the implementation and practice of even good things are not going to be the good things themselves. And what I mean by that in regard to morality is that I believe there is a case, a beautiful case for there being a certain right and wrong to conduct. But I don't believe most people live at that layer. I think the layer we live on is there were first people who realized that things were devastating through experience, through probably bloodshed and hardship. And those people, through those lessons, went out and through strength of will, forged groups and communities and societies where those things could be avoided because of actual real understanding of those things. But absent that personal connection, absent that true understanding, it isn't pure goodness, it's subservience. You know, like the way that looks is after that's established, people follow the rules for fear of punishment. There are a lot of people that would do a lot more bad if they thought they could get away with it. And that's definitely better than having nothing because at least people can live their lives peacefully, you hope. But it leaks out. It creates this pressure, this undercurrent where there are people sort of waiting, you know, people are waiting for an opportunity. And if it gets to a tipping point where those really internalized, deeply held and understood beliefs are lost, it creates this current and movement towards things that fly under the banner of goodness and decency, but actually are a push towards letting out people's most base desires. And I think that's actually the appeal of certain villains. 
because villains who are very intelligent and who appear to have their eyes open appear free. You know, there's this unrestriction that's valuable and desirable because basically all of us, to some extent, in certain ways, live with this discord between our actual desires and our own realized morality and the laws that are imposed on us, the structure that's imposed on us, the things we're told are good. And it's dangerous because the only way there, the only way to that realized morality is to first, at some critical level, discard the things that are being pushed down our throats. And that puts you in a weird sort of gray area where there's a vacuum, there's a void because you've now rejected the things that are imposed on you for the sake of them being the rules in the hopes that you can then build something more structurally sound for yourself based on who you are and what you want to be. But there's always that risk because then in that vacuum, what forms? Because it could be anything. And if the wrong person comes along at that critical moment or you just find something that appeals to your base instincts, you can go in any number of terrible directions. I think a lot of people support villains because they're stopping at a certain point. They see the freedom that the villains embody. They see the power the villains embody, the autonomy, and find that appealing. But then there's another step, which is what are the effects of their actions? Who are they actually? Are they making difficult choices or easy choices that are selfish? And this relates to Attack on Titan, if they're really even free at that point. If they're following their emotional indulgences. Jeez, how many more freaking hero agencies are gonna pop up in this neighborhood? I know, it's such a pain. Not enough for you to you will carry your family close to your flesh to ensure that those feelings never fade that outfit though they are merely buried deep down inside him tucked away yes the theme he will be the symbol of fear that craves destruction already he has taken the first grand step toward greatness greatness here's a present celebrate your new life with the hands of those gutter punks Wait, he just gets all the hands? We'll leave the shell of your old life behind. Now, stand tall. Show me. Again, reaching out the hand. Tomura Shigaraki. Tomura Shigaraki. Origin. What about Shigaraki? My last name, of course. New father figure. Watching mother and the others crumble away. Gotta watch it again. Thank you for not joining the corgi. I just want the league to live however we want to. Yeah, speaking of freedom. No longer necessary. Breaking off the shackles. Who's doing this? Power of flashbacks. Don't underestimate them. Here comes Gigantomania. I understand how fun it is to destroy something you hate, but that's not happening here. Looks like he's having a great time. What is it? To liberate people, to carry out Destro's righteous will at all costs. Love the inherent contradiction in that sentence. Here's an emotion I can turn into power. <laughs> Even the villains have their inspiring moments. But you will carry out your ancestors' will. Bring Destro's dream to fruition. Speaking of being set up as a kid. Amplified steel oh damn, you got a mobile suit. <laughs> he and Deku will get along with their love of percents. Yeah, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter how cool your suit is. That's pretty cool. But just anything he touches gets disintegrated. If you can meld both hate and joy in your heart, then you will be free. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrifying. <laughs> it's terrifying, but also thrilling. And also, it, it looks seductive. It looks great. I feel the power and it feels weirdly good. Like I was saying, I think it's that thing, you know, that freedom, the feeling of self power and control and mastery. That is the desirable thing. It also ties into something I've been thinking about the show for a while, where one of the dangers of hero society is that people, because they have heroes, sort of rest their responsibility on them somewhat and concede that to others, you know, concede that to others thinking that they're stronger or better or can carry that load for all of society. But the danger of that is if you practice that too long and too many people pass their responsibilities up like that, let's say to leaders of society, it goes wrong when people who don't have the best intentions end up occupying that spot. For me, the strongest society I can imagine is one where responsibility is not deferred to others. It's a personal journey and where that creates a web of people who are doing good, a web of people who actually are realized that I think prevents a lot of the systemic danger of this like 
you know, zigzag between heroes leading and villains leading and who we're supporting. You often hear in politics, right? Like if this leader comes into power, then we're all doomed. If that's the case, it's too late because it's a matter of time. For me, a better system is where that can't possibly happen, not where it hasn't happened yet. And I think it only works if there's a base level development that happens among the individuals that comprise the society. Although maybe that's too idealistic. I feel like people would follow Shigaki because he's more powerful than them. And I don't just mean in terms of his physical power or his quirk power. I mean, in terms of his disposition. I mean, look at him. He's super charismatic in this, in these scenes. The only antidote to that is they'll have to developed that own kind of thing personally, even if that's very difficult and it contains a danger in itself. Did Reed Destro die? It was very unclear. You must have cut them off to keep your body from disintegrating, huh? Hidden by a steel shard for TV. Why were we fighting again? Why can't you show Shigaraki's family get turned into sand and oh, right. it's because you made us be cut off feet? Here. Once again, Shigaraki rubbing it in his face. Don't say no The charisma. Sight was negated. Wait, he negated that power with a look? I understand. Great Destro. The one who should be at the forefront of liberation. Right. The one who will create the world you dreamed of. Shigaki beat him in his own game. Is a person who embodies freedom. The figure before me is a shining beacon. Speaking of inspiring people and being a leader, he just gained a lot of infrastructural control. At least he's principled. I'm ready to sacrifice myself. Can't say the guy's not convicted. Destro's dying wish. The Meta Liberation Army is now under your command. And all its accessories and media and publishing companies. <laughs> he's moved to tears. If we'd worked with the Hasaikai. Sorry from the bottom, now we're here. Enjoying a fancy platter of sushi in a nicer room. So Overhaul lost his hand and Redestro loses his feet as Shigaraki stands over them in triumph. And each time he takes something away from him, like drugs or all of society's infrastructure. Facing an unexpected threat, the residents of Deka City banded together in resistance. Is this the spin they put on this event? Unfortunately, the incident left behind many mysteries. Indeed. If you only knew, Deku. We live to fight on. I miss you, Deku. There's the sushi. Sushi that was purchased using our funds. The medical treatment, we don't have funds video anymore. editing, and Toga's new coat were also benefits of our financial sponsorship. Yeah, well, don't forget. This is another new coat? Welcome, and thank you for coming. They got a real layer now. Warriors. I am Redestro. It is a pleasure to see you. Today. Is Hawks here? Look at this getup. Look at this chair. Tomura Shigaraki is truly free. He fills me with awe. Which necessitated my abdication. From this moment, the Liberation Army recognizes Tomura Shigaraki as Grand Commander. This is unbelievably huge. This is such a victory. The Human Liberation Army and the League of Villains unite under a new name. Can't be worse than the League of Villains. The Paranormal Liberation Front. That's all right. <laughs> we'll do what we want. I don't doubt it. The Paranormal Liberation Front. That's what I call a flashy name. Well, I guess it's better than something tacky like the League of Villains. Right? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Time to do that surgery we've seen. I will grant you power. More power. Sure that's what what could go wrong? What could go wrong with Shiraki having more power than he has? What are the kids at 1A doing? Suddenly their, <laughs> their quirk growth doesn't seem that impressive anymore. Deku's playing around with his finger. I can't say it anymore. Playing with his whips. We need to get it together. <laughs> They have no idea, do they? They have no idea what's coming. I really miss the kids, though. I think the next episode's gonna be the season finale, right? I hope we get to see them one more time. I didn't get to say my goodbyes. <laughs> I guess I'll see them in season six. They're just living their lives in peace. Endeavor taught the trio a lot, but it wasn't enough for this. It wasn't enough. They don't have enough power. You can't even enter the same field as Shigaraki anymore if you can turn you to dust remotely like this. And also he has more power somehow. From rags to riches, the villain story. This arc, especially these last few episodes, have felt like a huge payoff because it's been clear from early on that the villains have an arc and are important and are not just, you know, enemies to be destroyed. But I underestimated the extent to which that would go. This feels like the first sort of climax for the development. And it's great how I can simultaneously fear them and think this is a bad thing and a huge danger while also being able to root for them to a certain degree. Seeing them come up like this, it's fun to reflect back on this crew's first meeting when they couldn't get it together and they were squabbling. Now they've taken over the whole country, basically. It's not even hard for me to imagine them gaining support, you know, like public support, especially with the media tools they have and the fact that the society, aside from Lookboy, ultimately seems large 
intellectually fickle and are sort of looking up, you know, looking to the top to sort of guide them. There are always people who will be happy to fill that void. And if that void is there, it's sort of a toss of the dice, you know, it's luck what that ends up looking like. Although it will mirror where society is at the individual level, to some degree, I think. So another great episode. I'll see you next time for what is very, very sadly the end of season five.